rain. Not normally what we think of when we talk about the world's worst weather. And yet more people lose their lives as a result of sudden intense rain and floods than from any other kind of weather on Earth. People often drive into moving water, realize too late the danger they're in, and then need to be rescued if it's not too late. And floods aren't just our deadliest disaster. They're our most expensive, too. The force of moving floodwaters is massive, able to push structures off their foundations and destroy them. Around the world, millions of families have had to watch helplessly as unstoppable rivers overflow their banks, raging through their communities. Take Del Rio, Texas, for instance. The residents of this tiny border town found themselves inundated by a flash flood on August 21st, 1998. When the remnants of Tropical Storm Charlie stalled overhead. Tropical Storm Charlie, it formed in the western Gulf of Mexico. It wasn't moving very fast when it moved ashore, and it basically got hung up on the topography there and just sat. Once it sits there, it just has to spin and rain out. It just rained and rained and rained and rained. It was terrible. The storm dropped 17 inches of rain in just 24 hours, overflowing nearby rivers and creating a seven-foot-high flood. For a time, lightning was the only illumination in the town, granting only haunting momentary flashes of the rising waters. The water kept coming in and kept coming in and kept coming in. I mean, fast, you know, just coming up, coming up. And you could see that there was nothing but water. You couldn't see the top of the houses, um, except a few places. As people tried to escape, they quickly found themselves stranded by the rushing waters. You see your neighborhood suddenly flooded completely and people screaming and cars floating down the street. It's just, it's awful. The rains finally stopped and the floodwaters receded, leaving Del Rio in ruins. It was devastating to us. I mean, the people were just stunned. The economic devastation a flood creates can reach into the billions of dollars. But beyond the financial destruction, a flood's toll on human life can be catastrophic. In China, in August of 1998, 2,000 people perished and more than a half million homes were destroyed when rains caused the Yangtze and Sunghua rivers to swell, flooding an area the size of Utah. Severe rains that cause devastating floods like this have the potential to wreak additional havoc in the form of mudslides. In 1996, the islands of the Philippines were overwhelmed by typhoons. Portions of the steep cliffs, saturated by the rains, succumbed to their own weight, rumbling down onto homes below. Many believe the devastation near the town of Umpqua, Oregon, in November of 1996, began when a rain-soaked 10-cubic-yard gash from a clear-cut hillside fell, picking up momentum and logging debris along its path. All of a sudden, it becomes a 100-yard slide and then it comes down and it's going faster and it's picking up more water. The branches are digging out the creek beds and gathering more boulders. Now it's a 500 or a 1,000 cubic yard slide. Gordon Marvin tells us what he saw. I was standing at the window 
and looking out the window trying to see what this was and these big these were two foot diameter fir trees they're probably 120 foot tall they they just start shaking real violent like that and then they just went and they were gone they were just taken away in a split second arnold Ryder was by his car when he saw a huge wall of water rushing toward him the wall of water was probably three maybe four times higher than i was Arnold was then hit by the torrent of mud. It was a sensation of going down a garbage disposal. I mean, it was a swirling, swirling, swirling sensation, and uh, uh, probably close to blacking out or whatever. But then when everything stopped, why, I was buried in mud, and the only thing sticking out was my head. My mouth was jammed full of mud and debris and stuff, so I laid there and dug that out to where I could swallow and breathe. And, Arnold survived his ordeal with a torrent of mud and debris. He was one of the lucky ones. Year after year, around the world, thousands of others aren't so fortunate. Whether it's a destructive flood or mudslide, in Oregon or in China, they start the same way, with just a few drops of gently falling rain. Next, the almost invisible hand of winter brings entire communities to a standstill and the trauma of being caught in an avalanche. Nature's hardest worker. The common worker bee. Laboring tirelessly in service of the hive. One wonders Duracell's best ever. Count on Duracell when storm season hits. Visit weather.com slash Duracell to get prepared. Hey, boss, what are we throwing here? Yeah. I thought we was getting some ziti. And I'll put the ziti. You're here to lose weight, gabish. Tell us, sweetheart. If you want to lose weight and look great, nothing burns fat faster than Stagger 2. Well, boss, what about this Zena stuff? Oh. This metabol whatever. Forget about it. This family only uses Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. Stacker 2, it's the world's strongest fat burner. Capiche? Oh. You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a wrecking baby, right, like round, round. They spin, they scrub. They're the spin scrub brushes. Working together, they scrub carpets better. Helping the Hoover steam back wide pack add clean all leading brands. And they can snap out for easy cleaning. Steam back with spin scrub. Only from Hoover. Let's give you a big, big, big picture of what's going on across the nation. Three areas of weather stalled out front over South Florida, giving you rain showers there. Second front, earlier some showers over the UP. Those are diminishing in an onshore flow here in the Pacific Northwest. That is giving you some rain showers, scattered light rain showers there. Rain showers ending here over the UP, but the rain continues to come down here in South Florida. Although uh, Miami, not a whole lot of thunderstorms, more like a constant light rain here. And also showers trying to head on towards uh, Homestead, even across the Upper Keys over the next several hours. The Pacific Northwest, more of a light nuisance shower tonight. Stay tuned. Your local forecast is coming up next. Currently, the temperature is 51 degrees under fair skies. forecast for your area.
Expect fair skies Saturday through Monday with temperatures in the 70s on Saturday. surface of a beautiful snowy peak lies a hidden danger, the avalanche. At times, without warning, skiers and snowboarders are chased by a slide, forced to race against the onrushing snow in a desperate attempt to save their lives. Sometimes they're lucky. Other times, they're caught, and like a surfer trapped in a huge wave, they're washed uncontrollably down the hill. Each year, in the United States alone, an average of 25 people die from avalanches, more than the average for hurricanes. What makes the avalanche so dangerous is its unpredictability. Cracks in the layers of snow are hidden until the weight of the top layer overwhelms its bonds the layers below causing a slide to occur. This is all very difficult to foresee, even for avalanche experts like Bruce Tremper. It just felt like somebody pulled the rug out from underneath me. I just flopped down on the snow, and the snow was just suddenly rocketing down the hill faster than I could have ever imagined it could go. I jumped up and tried to get off the slab, but then it was too late. It was all breaking up around me, and I couldn't ski in it. And every breath I would take it from a plug of snow in my throat and the snow just went everywhere down my underwear it rips off your your gloves your goggles your hat instantly it's gone can't tell, tell which way is up you're choking on snow and it's just a horrible feeling and then finally when the snow is starting to come to a stop then I'm not tumbling anymore so then finally I could swim I could swim hard and stay on the surface and I could feel that the harder I swam the more I came to the surface and luckily I swam hard and when it finally came to a stop I was only buried up to about my waist and I felt really really lucky you know I was very cold very wet and just trembling because uh, it was just a, a very traumatic experience surviving an avalanche is a once-in-a-lifetime experience the more prevalent winter phenomenon but not by any means ordinary is the blizzard Blizzard temperatures can drop low enough that it can freeze the mighty Niagara Falls. And in the 1940s, a series of storms left snow several feet deep and brought temperatures as low as 20 below zero to 10 western states. From Montana to Arizona, the entire region was declared a disaster area, and it took three months for the snows to melt and for life to get back to normal. There's a good reason for counting blizzards among the world's worst weather. A single blizzard can affect more people than any other natural phenomenon. One of the worst blizzards of all to hit the United States came in March of 1993. It was so impressive, it's become known simply as the Superstorm. Some consider it the storm of the century. In simple statistics, the superstorm affected 100 million people, claimed more than 200 lives. 23 states had at least an inch of snow. Many had more than 40 inches. But those statistics only hit at what people had to endure. Born in the Gulf of Mexico, the superstorm hit Florida early and hard. Hurricane strength winds and 11 tornadoes wrecked homes. In some places, storm surge reached 12 feet deep. At least 28 people lost their lives. As the superstorm moved up through the south, it delivered a late winter punch few will ever forget. Up to two feet of snow fell across parts of Georgia. Atlanta looked more like Buffalo. Even crossing a street became an act of courage. Still moving up the eastern seaboard, the superstorm lashed North Carolina with true whiteout conditions. 
Unaccustomed to such severe winter weather, in many places, everyday life ceased to exist. New York City got a foot of snow. Even in Maine, a hardy place where winter's taken in stride, the superstorm drove people to empty store shelves. But as bad as the superstorm was, the most expensive winter storm in Canadian history was not a blizzard, but an ice storm. Northern New York, as well as southeastern Canada, one of the worst ice storms on record occurred that resulted in billions of dollars of damage and left some areas, in particular in southeastern Canada, without power for a week to two weeks, if not longer. On January 8, 1998, it began not to snow, but to rain. And that was the problem. In an ice storm, as rain hits the ground, it immediately freezes, creating a growing layer of ice on everything it touches. Driving becomes treacherous. Oh my God. Icicles grow everywhere, creating elegant sculptures. But their weight bends trees to the breaking point, which when they fall on power lines, send thousands of residents and businesses into darkness. The effect of such a disruption like that is uh, virtually catastrophic with billions of dollars in damage and a tremendous impact on the people that live there. The ice storm eventually melted away as the area eagerly welcomed the spring. But with the spring comes thunderstorms and their own severe weather. When we return, lightning and hail arrive with the onslaught of the thunderstorm. Storm Week is sponsored by the Home Depot. You can now shop online at homedepot.com. And Jeep, makers of Grand Cherokee, Wrangler, and the all-new Jeep Liberty. Mm -hmm. 